All right, this is on transformation of graph of quadratic functions. Linear functions have what we've been focusing on in chapter one and three. Um, and now we're gonna move into what we call quadratic functions. The shape of these will model something like if you kick a football up in the air and then it comes back down. It's not going to be a straight line. So there are two types of functions. One is in standard form and the other is in vertex form. So you can see in this chart, it shows you the difference in shapes between a linear function, the top graph, and then the quadratic function in the bottom graph. Notice the shape. So we call the shape of a quadratic function um, a parabola. So it's going to have a U shape. So example one says, this is the old fashioned or last resort method to graphing a quadratic function. So we give you a equation, and this is our function here, and we can create a table. So in chapter one, we evaluated functions for one, two, three, four, five, and then we would graph the ordered pairs, and it would look like this. So there is our parabola. We are going to move into what we call transformations. So the first type of transformation is called a translation. What a translation does is it moves the graph left or right. So this first slide here, if we have it going left, the function will look like this, f of x equals x, and then there'll be a plus symbol in front. If it is going to move right, the function will look like x minus and then all squared. The other type of transformation called a translation is a vertical translation up or down. So if it goes up, the function will have an x squared and then it'll be some plus number at the end. If it moves down, it'll have an x squared and then a minus number. So here's an example too. Using the graph of f of x, which is the parent, so this is your parent, we want to graph that first. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give the table for our parent function. So we have negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two, and then we evaluate it. So we substitute those five integers into the function and we get negative two times negative two is positive four. Negative one times negative one is positive one. Zero times zero is zero. One times one is one. Two times two is four. And then we would graph the five points. And then there is our parent graphed out. Now what we want to do is we want to apply the transformation. So the first transformation is inside the function, so it's a plus. So if we go back up to this chart, the graph is going to move to the left. So it's going to move left to units. The other thing that's going to happen is the minus 3. That's outside the function we call that. So if we look back in our chart, it's a minus 3. So that's going to move it down 3 units. So then what we do is we go ahead and pick up that purple function 
and we move it left two and down three. So we move all of those ordered pairs. So we're gonna take this point right here and move it left two and then down three. So there's the first point. Then we take this point here, we move it left two, down three. We take this point here, move it left two, down three. We take this point here, move it left two, down three. And what you're gonna get when you're done is a parabola that has been moved left two, down three. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and identify those ordered pairs for g of x. And they are negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one. So they've all been moved left two and then down three. Here's another example where we want you to graph the parent. So I'm just going to graph that parent with the same ordered pairs from the previous example. And then g of x, this function here, the minus 5 is outside the function. So how we describe that, it's moving down 5. So we take each of the points and move them down five units. So then the ordered pairs would be as such. Here's another one. We'll graph the parent first. And then we apply the transformations. So this minus two is inside the function. So that's gonna move it right two. The plus four is outside the function. It's gonna move it up four. So now we go ahead and graph our points. We're going to go right two and then up four. So if you notice, this is the origin where the parent function is. Our new function, our g of x, is right two, up four. And we call that the child. The next type of transformation set is reflections and vertical stretches. So we can have two types of reflections, reflections about the y-axis and the x-axis. So y-axis, here's our y-axis right here. What happens with the parent and the child it doesn't move at all because that green line just reflects about that, so it just stays the same. What does change is when you have a reflection about the y, the x-axis, here's your original parent, and when you have your x-axis reflection, it flips about that green line. So then the points 
will reflect and you'll have your child. The difference between the equation is you're going to have a negative in front of the function. So this function will look like this, negative x squared, where this one over here, when you substitute the negative into the function, it just becomes still the same. So just make sure you're aware when you see a negative in front of the function, that's going to be a flip about the x-axis. Vertical stretches and compressions happen when you have a multiplier in front of the function. So there's going to be some type of multiplier. And there are two situations. One is when the number is greater than 1. It's going to stretch away from the x-axis. And when the number is a fraction, it's going to compress towards the x-axis. So let's go ahead and do some examples. So the first one we'll graph is our parent. So same ordered pairs. I'm just gonna write that table again down. So we're evaluating the function. And that's the parent. Now we have the child. Notice what is out in front of the function is a negative. So what that's telling you, it's going to reflect about the x axis. So if I create a green line right across the x axis, it's going to flip about that x axis. So now we flip it. And now we have our child. So the table of values, the x's have not changed. There's still negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. But notice what happens to the y's. They all, all are negatives now. All right, example 6. Let's grab the parent first. I'm going to put the table down again. So there's our parent. We have two transformations that happen on this problem. The first one is the negative. So what that negative is doing again, it's going to reflect about the x-axis. So here's our x-axis and it's going to reflect. So we'll take care of that first. So there's the first transformation. Now there is a multiplier that's happening in front of the function. So that's going to change the shape. So if we go up to our list, if we look at these pink writing here, and I just erase this, that number is a fraction. It's between 0 and 1. So what's happening is it's compressing towards the x-axis. 
So what's happening, this is going to get looking wider, where if we had it greater than one, it's going to look narrower or taller. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and take each of our numbers and we stretch them twice as big. So this is going to make the, we call this a vertical compress by multiplying it by one half. So it's going to make it wider. So the first point zero zero doesn't change at all. And now what we're going to do is we're going to move that this point right here out wider to multiply it by one half. Let's draw a quick sketch of it here and then I'll tell you what the order of pairs are. So we have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And then what happens is, is these numbers right here, we multiply it by negative 1 half, and you get negative 2. Multiply this number by negative 1 half, and you get negative 1 half. Multiply this by negative 1 half, it's still at 0. Multiply this by negative 1 half, and you get negative 1 half. Multiply this by negative 1 half, and you get negative two. So that's how we get our ordered pairs. So the actual function is what's in the pink.